Recruiting sucks. I've been rejected more times than I can remember. But in summer 2018, I interned at Microsoft and I got the return offer, which I ultimately declined with no other offers in hand. This is the story of how I did it. It all starts in high school. I got my first internship ever in summer of 2013. I was 15 and just about to start sophomore year at the American School of Paris. We were in India at the time, visiting extended family. It was hot, I was lounging around looking like this, watching a lot of cricket and playing video games. I knew college applications were on the horizon and I had to beef up my resume with extracurriculars and other experiences, so I asked my parents if they knew anybody I could work with. Lesson number one, ask people if they can connect you to opportunities. My mom's cousin worked at NDTV, a pretty big news company in India, and my dad's best friend worked at the marketing department at Revlon. They both said I could come and help in some capacity, but it'd be purely for experience, no pay. I was young and eager to learn, so I happily accepted. I'd worked at NDTV in the morning, and then after lunch, I'd head over to the Revlon office. Fast forward, I'm in Houston, I'm a junior at St. John's, and I'm taking an elective class called Science, Research, and Design. Someone reaches out to our teacher and says they have an unpaid research opportunity at Baylor College of Medicine. I'm just trying to get more experience, so I show interest and get the gig. So in summer 2015, I do unpaid research at the Eagleman Lab, and I also work part-time in retail at a uniform company called Sue Mills. Now I'm about to graduate high school. It's spring of 2016, and a classmate's dad reaches out to my college counselor and says they have a paid internship opportunity for the summer. I don't really want experience since at this point I've already applied to all my colleges, but I do want some pocket money, so I go ahead and apply. And by that I mean I fill out a brief questionnaire, and I don't think anybody else applied, so I automatically got the position. Now I'm a freshman at Rice, it's fall of 2016, and I work at the IT help desk. I hear all these upperclassmen talk about internships at Facebook and Google and all these quant firms, so I'm like, let's do it. So I make a resume in LaTeX, I print out 50 copies, and I go to the career fair and drop them off at every booth I can see. Big oil and gas companies, tech firms, consulting firms, anywhere. I don't hear back from anyone. In the spring of 2017, I try again. More resumes, more booths, more, hi, my name is Nelman, and I'm looking for a software engineering internship this summer. Out of sheer luck, I get an interview at a big oil and gas company called Schlumberger. And I say sheer luck because at that point, I have no tech experience whatsoever. I do the interview and I hear back pretty soon after. I get the offer and I accept. The summer is great and I come back to school with a return offer. I have until mid-September to get back to them. Lesson number two, always ask for more time to consider your offers. It's sophomore year and the next few dates I'm gonna tell you are pretty important. So listen close. First, classes at Rice start August 21st, 2017, which means my mid-September deadline is only a month away, and that gives me almost no time to recruit with any other companies, which is probably why Schlumberger picked that date in the first place. Rice has this policy that if you get a return offer from a summer internship, you have two weeks or until November 1st, whichever is later, to make a decision. So I let Schlumberger know, and they bump my offer deadline to October 6th. I'm still young and have no leverage, so I don't push back on this and ask for more time. In hindsight, I should have. It was worth asking. I have experience now, so getting an internship at a big tech company should be easy, right? Just apply online. Wrong. I do apply online, everywhere, but it's a black hole and nobody gets back to me. So I decide to take matters into my own hands. Lesson number three, always get referrals if you can. First, I hit up an upperclassman friend who had done the Explore internship the summer before while I was at Schlumberger. She puts in a referral. Almost immediately, I get a phone interview. I did the phone interview first week of September and waited. After a week, I followed up with my Microsoft contact. I was told to keep waiting, so I waited. Still nothing. At this point, I knew I had to try something different. I knew a lot of tech companies did info sessions where the recruiter would drop by, they'd be free food, and they'd give you a rundown of the summer opportunities. I also knew that recruiter would be screening all the applications from my university, no matter if you applied online, at the career fair, or anywhere else. So I decided to stop by. And not just stop by, I decided to stay after. So I go to the Microsoft info session, and once everyone has left, I go up to the recruiter and introduce myself. I say, hey, my name is Numan, and I've already done the phone interview for the Explorer internship, but I haven't heard back yet. Is there any way you could look into my application or give me any updates? We chat for a bit, and now the on-campus recruiter has heard my name and connected that name to my face. I'm a real person now, not just some application. And that's really important. I'm told the same thing, to keep waiting. I end up also going to the career fair, just to say hi again. I mean, if the recruiter sees me multiple times, the likelihood of him remembering who I am is higher, right? So once again, I show up, just say hi, and leave. Lesson number four, always follow up again and again and again. Now the rest of my interactions with Microsoft are through email. I follow up again. This time I mention my offer deadline. In hindsight, I should have done that sooner because now my Microsoft contact loops in the on-campus recruiter and senses the urgency. And remember, I've already met this on-campus recruiter in person. He knows who I am. See how it's coming full circle? I still don't hear back, so on October 2nd, I follow up again at 1.54 p.m. This time, I hear back almost instantly. 
At 2.56 p.m., the on-campus recruiter emails back saying, unfortunately, they won't be able to accommodate my deadline. Which makes sense because my Slumberjay offer deadline is just four days away. I remember reading this email in class and feeling heartbroken. I had tried so hard, but I guess that was it. It was over. Or was it? I email back and this time I white lie. I say that Slumberjay can extend my offer deadline and that Microsoft is my first choice, so I'm happy to take whatever interview opportunity pops up first in the near future. This way I leave the door open and I figure I can just push Slumberjay's offer deadline, somehow. Slumberjay doesn't budge and it's October 6th, the day of my deadline. Microsoft tells me they're still seeing if they can line up an on-site interview. And then two hours later, they say I passed the phone screens and got the final round on-site interview in Redmond. It's all coming together but I don't have any other offers yet. So do I take my chances or do I accept Slumberjay? I decide to accept Slumberjay. I schedule my onsite interview with Microsoft for October 19th, the earliest date possible. I fly out, do the interview and get the offer. It's October 27th. So at this point, I went from not hearing back at all to getting an internship offer in one month, just because I persisted. Lesson number five, be selfish and do what's best for you. I really want to intern with Microsoft, but I've already said yes to Slumberjay. So what do I do? Will I get blacklisted? I talk to a bunch of people and some people say don't renege and some people say it's okay. I decide I don't care if Slumberjay blacklists me. I'm willing to burn that bridge. I don't think I want to work there full time anyway. I accept Microsoft and let Slumberjay know. Let's pause real quick. I know a lot of you watching are at will employees and so your company can let you go at any moment. Companies have so much power, so it's okay to be selfish. Do what's best for you and don't worry too much about what the company will think. It doesn't matter. Also, for what it's worth, recruiters come and go, so the chances the company remembers that you reneged is super low. I get back to school in fall of 2018 and I have Microsoft on my resume, along with a return offer. My deadline is November 1st, which is consistent with the Rice policies. Now, I have no trouble getting interviews, but the problem is a lot of the companies I'm recruiting with have processes that last weeks and they start in late September or early October, which means there's no way I can complete everything by November 1st. I try to push Microsoft's deadline, but no luck. In the meantime, I try to line up some other offers so if the Microsoft deadline passes, I'm not stranded. I apply to a bunch of places, cold email recruiters and get referrals, and I end up doing a lot of interviews. I also apply to fellowship programs, 8VC, the Kleiner Perkins program, and HackNY. I move on to the semi-finalist stage with the KP Fellows program, so email Microsoft one more time, hoping for an extension to my offer deadline. They say no. My semi-finalist interview is a technical interview with a software engineer from Pinterest. I end up declining my Microsoft return offer with no other offers in hand. I continue interviewing and end up getting an internship offer at MongoDB for software engineering in New York and at Facebook for technical project management in Seattle. And I pass my technical interview for the KP Fellows program and move on to the finalist stage. I don't pass my Palantir on site, I don't hear back from 8VC, and I get rejected from HackNY. As a Kleiner Perkins finalist, I'm able to shortlist a bunch of companies from their portfolio. They then send out my resume to these companies who can then reach out to me to schedule interviews. I only hear back from Coursera. Luckily, I was already interviewing with them before I even started the KP process. And by that point, I'd already passed the first round technical screen. So Coursera automatically moves me to the final interview stage. I pass the interview and I get the offer. If I accept, I'll be a Kleiner Perkins engineering fellow and a software engineering intern at Coursera. I'm ecstatic, it's everything I wanted. But Coursera is in Mountain View and I want it to be in San Francisco in the heart of the city. So I dig up a cold email I had sent to someone at Gusto and follow up. They respond and connect me to a recruiter. I email the recruiter and let them know I want to finish all my recruiting and make a decision by the holidays. At this point, it's first week December, so that's like three weeks away. I end up doing their entire process in one week. Hacker rank, two technical phone screens, and then the entire on-site loop with behavioral and technical interviews. I get the offer and I accept. Gusto is in San Francisco proper and I couldn't be happier. And with that, I finish up all my internship recruiting for the year and actually, for high school and college combined, because the next thing is new grad recruiting for my full-time job. <sighs> I know that was a lot, but I wanted to detail everything I'd been through to show you for some people it's easy. They just apply online, they do the interviews and they pass and they get the offer. But for me, I had to work a little bit harder than everyone else to get the opportunities I wanted. And it truly is a numbers game. The more you apply, the more interviews you do, the more people you email, the higher the likelihood of you securing the internship you want. And I hope I've shown you that you too can get the internship of your dreams, even if you have no experience. We all start somewhere. I believe in you. Keep grinding, you got this. That's all I have for today. Till next time, cheers.